Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond the 3D. My name is Michael J. Russ, your host. And I first want to say thank you for all my newest uh, European listeners on Spotify. I really do appreciate your taking a moment of your time to expose yourself to something that could perhaps take your life in a whole new direction, at least your, uh, your thought process in a new direction, which then will uh, help you uh, manifest things in your life that you really, really want, really desire. You know, the thing I want to first do a little housekeeping here and say that I know that I don't produce a podcast uh, every week, and there's a reason why I don't. I've probably said it before. However, I think it bears being said again because I've had a few people ask. I produce podcasts um, when I've carefully curated and written and rewritten my thoughts to get a cohesive flow. Because through meditations and my walks, uh, which are also forms of meditation, I have a lot of thoughts running through my head. And not all of them will produce a full podcast. Maybe some points that I'd like to make here and there, something good enough for perhaps a post in social media. Uh, however, I value your time as I value my own. And I don't want to be the one bombarding you with four podcasts a month. Plus, what I'd really like you to do is to listen to the podcast and let it seep in. Let it roll around your head for a few weeks. Try something uh, that you've heard and see that it actually works. And that's, that's called turning in knowledge into experiential wisdom. That's what it's called. And that's what I'd really like you to do is just that. Take what you take, whatever you can from each podcast, and it may be a small morsel, and chew on it for a while and give it a go in your life. Uh, put it to, into practice so that you can make it work for you. Again, because it's just information, it's just stuff, until, again, you give it life. I want to thank some people, uh, two people in particular. Kimberly Rowell, thank you so much for being a listener and giving me such golden feedback. And my longtime listener, Cheryl Coggins, who is, is again, who has given me some incredible golden feedback over the past couple of years. Uh, both of you have contributed greatly to uh, these podcasts, uh, a lot of the ideas that I, that I bounce off of you. Uh, and the feedback that you give uh, for the ideas that I have uh, in some of the content uh, is special. It's, it's fantastic. Today, I want to talk about how to be happy during crises, chaos, and upheaval. Um, this is probably my sixth episode about happiness. I keep coming at it from different directions because happiness is important. It's important to feel happy and to feel joy in your life every single day. And I continue to hear people whine and complain. That's not getting down on them. However, they're just whining and complaining about why they're not happy with their lives, how something outside of them is impacting them to the point where they can't be happy. And this fascinates me because if you've listened to any of these podcasts, you know one thing. You have complete and total control over whether you're happy or not that happiness is innate to you, that it flows within you deeply. And it was, you were born with happiness, you will die with happiness, flowing within you freely and abundantly. And this classroom or laboratory we call life throws things at you. And it's up to you to manage them in such a way where your happiness is retained, that it keeps flowing within you. Now, the world has entered a new phase of reality. I think we all know that. Some have frustratingly referred to it as an alternative universe. <laughs> uh, it, thing is, though, it's real, and it's here to stay. Nothing's going to be the same. And if you don't do change very well, I hope you've had your seatbelt and crash helmet firmly uh, fixed to your body in the past five months, uh, or how, whatever period of time you're listening to this, since uh, March of 2020, uh, because you've been witnessing the very definition of upheaval and change. Change that, if you're not careful, will take control of you instead of you controlling it. And what I hear most often from people are comments about not being to be happy, as I said. And they're unsettled, they're uncomfortable, agitated, sad, and fearful about what's happening, anxious about the future and what it may hold for them uh, in their life and in the world around them. Uh, people are experiencing real pain right now. 
the, uh, the food insecurity has grown by leaps and bounds um, in the past, just in the past five months since March of 2020. I don't see this ending anytime soon. 40% of the jobs that are out there uh, that have been, that have been um, uh, furloughed, let, have been ended, aren't going to come back. Well, one in four restaurants is going to close. One in six businesses may not again reopen. And these are, this is real. This is real. And as I follow the, the equity markets, stock markets and everything, I hear the, this constant pull, in, you know, pull back and forth between, you know, hey, the, the equity markets are not reflecting the real economy. The real economy is, is Main Street. It's, it's you. It's what's you, happening in your life and in your company that you're working for or you've been laid off from or you've been let go or whatever it is, possibility of letting go. These are, this is real. And I care. I care about you. And what I, why I do these podcasts is because I have been through a lot. I've been through deaths of friends and family. Um, I have I- experienced a life where nothing day to day, month to month was guaranteed. For 37 years, nothing has been guaranteed. No income guarantee. No guarantee I was going to be able to take a vacation. No guarantee I was going to be able to buy a house. No guarantee that the next month I was going to be able to pay for the house. I've lived in a, in a world of miracle manifestation. That's the best way I can describe it. And a lot of people um, are not really experienced at dealing with change and with having to deal with unknowns and manage the uncontrollable. I have, and I'm conveying in these podcasts many of the tools that I have adopted myself in order to manage and curate my flow of happiness every single day. I wake up happy. I go to bed ha- happy. It doesn't matter what happened that day. It doesn't matter. And that's, that's really what you're here to do. You're here to alter, to transform and evolve your thought processes to make sure that you're happy and joyful. You've each got a mission. I don't know what it is. Uh, I have an idea of what mine is, and it's, it's, ever develop, it's, ongoing, it's an ongoing process of development. However, I know one of my missions is to convey to you what I convey in these podcasts. I'm not here doing this because I want to make money. I'm not here to monetize this. I've produced over 100 podcasts, and hopefully they are helping you helping you live your life in a positive way. Hopefully, you were optimistic, hopeful about your life and where you're going. And if not, that you are curating that hope, that you have taken control of your thoughts, words, feelings, and actions, your inner conversations, that you have done that or are in the process of doing it or continually doing it. It is an ongoing process. It's not like you, you take control and then you're done. There will always be some form of crisis, chaos, problem, challenge, whatever you want to call it. I prefer to see everything in life as, life as a challenge. And forget about, you know, being hard, tough, difficult, and all of that. Those, those are words that make you feel good if you don't succeed. But even if you don't succeed, you've succeeded. If you've learned something from the failure. And that's the way life is. It is an ongoing process of evolution and personal transformation. Some people like to call it ascension. Your entire life, from the moment you're born to the moment you die, you spend ascending through the various levels of consciousness. I'm here to help you ascend. Now, if you found yourself feeling uneasy about your present or your future, I hear you. And want to assist you with realigning yourself with the happiness and joy you deserve to feel all the time. All the time. If you listen to this podcast, you have an idea of what I'm going to say. And that is for those of you who have just come on board, listen closely. Curating happiness during perceived chaos, unrest, crisis, or disruption has more to do with you than anything outside of you. It's all about you. Because happiness in the end and the beginning, is a state of consciousness that you curate and control. 
that's what I want to get across here in this podcast. And as, as I run through some the paces of exactly um, what I suggest that you do in order to, again, I'm taking this, I'm approaching this from a whole different direction. Uh, and that's really my goal. I, I've, again, have five podcasts on happiness. Each of them approaches this from a different perspective. If you feel as if your life is getting away from you, you can bring it back. You can bring it back. This is all mental. You can train yourself to transcend events and circumstances as easily as changing your clothes. You can empower yourself in an instant. All you have to do is change the lens through which you are viewing your events and circumstances. That's what you have to do. The lens I'm referring to is perception. I recently read a story about a man who was sentenced to prison in the Middle Ages, and when he walked in, uh, when he walked into his dirty, dark, dank, bug-infested cell, he encountered a gray-haired man sitting by the light of a candle writing in his journal. After openly complaining about the squalid conditions, going on and on about how he felt, about where he was, and how he would never be able to tolerate being in those, in, in those conditions and under those circumstances for the six months he had been sentenced. He asked the old man, how long have you been here? To which the man calmly replied, I've been here 12 years. The newly sentenced man could not understand how the old man was able to be so calm under such squalid conditions. Why wasn't he going crazy? Why hadn't he gone crazy? Why, why, why wasn't he climbing the walls after 12 years? Now, you can let outside influences drive you bat crazy or not. You face challenges every single day, big ones, small ones. Sometimes they are always just small ones. The really big ones, those are the ones that throw most people for a loop because they're not practicing how to deal with challenges during the small ones because the technique is the same. You're the one who decides what you think of these circumstances that you're faced with, the events. You decide how you feel, what you're capable of, and the way you will respond to them. Although your first response might be, you've got to be kidding me, or how am I ever going to get through this? Even though you might say this, you're fully capable of transforming this initial perception at your discretion. Because this is the way it works, as I always say in these podcasts. Perception dictates everything else. Thoughts, words, inner conversations, feelings, responses. I told this to somebody in Bahrain I was talking to the other day, a young lady, um, wonderful young lady who decided to listen to this podcast, and I hope she's listening to this one. Uh, her name is Hana. Hana in Bahrain. You're Filipino, Mabuhay. How are you? Um, it's, an, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing, perception, how, how you feel bad about something because you're perceiving it one way, and you turn around, you have a realization, and you shift that perception, and all of a sudden you're now, wow, you feel better because you're no longer perceiving it as a negative in your life. And at the time of this podcast was published, every state in America is grappling with the question of how to safely open schools while keeping young people healthy at the same time. It's a, it's, it's a conundrum. Already students in several colleges and universities have had to reverse course and revert to online classes instead of in-person classes because students made health choices which led to outbreaks on campus. And the university, from a liability perspective, has to take this seriously. I'm sure they care about their students, but they have to take it seriously. If a student were to die based on their negligence, they would be in trouble. I'm not placing blame, only pointing out that every choice is a consequence, and if happiness is at the top of your list of desires, it's up to you to choose to engage in thoughts and conversations and actions that keep happiness flowing, growing, evolving. And if you made choices aligned with happiness, choices and other choices which, is, which have adversely impacted your experience, to keep happiness flowing, you'll have to align your perceptions with your new reality and keep moving on, right? You're, you're, things are going to happen. 
And you have to make active choices in the moment that keep happiness flowing. Outside influences are always going to be there. They're always going to be knocking on your door. You don't have to answer the door every single time. And if you do, you don't have to get upset, go off the handle, have a conniption fit, go crazy, be sad about every single outside event that occurs in your life to you and to those around you. This is what life does. You know, it hands you a lemon and it's up to you to choose to make it lemonade or not. That's the way it goes. The more you make lemonade, the happier you are. That's really the simple process. New Thought author Orison Sweat Marden wrote a profound statement about happiness, which perfectly corresponds or dovetails with what I just conveyed. He said, you must take your happiness with you or you will never find it. You could substitute happiness for joy here too. You must take your joy with you or you will never find it. Think about that. You must take your happiness with you or you will never find it. Remember the next remember this the next time uh, your happiness is spoiled by an event or circumstance. Think about that. You might ask you that question. Wow, um, am I did I bring my joy with me? Because I'm not gonna find it here in this mess. Whenever you suddenly realize that you're not happy, ask yourself a simple question. What am I thinking about that's preventing me? from being happy right now? What is, the, what, is, what is the course of my thoughts? What perception is preventing the happiness that's deeply innate to me is preventing that from flowing? It's preventing that, that happiness I was born with, the joy that is innate to me from flowing. What is, it, what is it that I'm thinking? I would bet you're unhappy because you were contaminating the present moment of now with fears, worries, anxieties, or other negative thoughts or feelings about the past or the future. That is the way it works. Something happens. You get uh, anxious, worried about whatever it is, frustrated by it, angry about it, whatever, and then we start projecting into the future. What if? What if this happens? What if that happens? I'll give you a little story that happened just this morning. On Friday, I got a $2,000 bill for a medical procedure. And I pay cash for my medical procedures. And uh, all weekend long, I had this $2,000 bill rolling around in my head. Now, how was I able to, and by the way, the last thing I want to do is pay $2,000 to for a medical procedure when I don't have to. And I know I didn't have to, but it wasn't exactly engraved in stone. Because I couldn't call the office until the business office, the building office, until Monday morning. So I had to go through the whole weekend um, with this $2,000 bill on my mind. So how did I handle it? I simply said, I cannot deal with this until Monday. I'm not going to allow it to ruin my weekend. That's it. That's all there is to it. I'm not going to allow this this, this uh, bill to ruin my 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 plans for this weekend. I'm not going to allow it to disrupt my mood. I'm not going to get anxious about it or fearful or worried about whether or not what they're going to say or how they're going to say it uh, or anything of that nature. Now, I called this morning and I spoke directly to the young lady uh, in billing. And if you want a tip, if you ever have to, uh, if you're in a situation where you're going to have to pay a bill and you have the ability to talk to the person who actually handles billing, Go develop a relationship with them. Leave a firm impression on them, a firm enough impression so that when you call, they know who you are. You can just simply say, I'm the guy who came in before uh, when, I was, when I was done with my office visit and I spoke to you about this and that. And they'll go, oh yeah, well this, <laughs> this woman was brilliant because I called her and literally I was on the phone saying, this is Michael Russ. And I started to describe my situation. He says, don't worry, I got this. I've got your records right up in front of me. I didn't have to give her my number or uh, billing number or anything. She had my records right in front of her. And she said, listen, I told you before, about a month ago, that or a month, month and a half ago when you were in here for your appointment, that don't worry, you're going to get a bill and it's going to be outrageous. Don't worry, that's not what you pay. And so my question to her is, what is it that I need to pay? If I were to give you cash right now, what would, what would it be? Well, instead of a $2,000 bill, it was a $500 bill. And that's the way it goes. And I, 
that's why we have a healthcare system in this country is kind of screwed up because insurance companies are being billed two thousand dollars for something that if you had cash you just paid five hundred for. All right, on to the next. If you really want to take control of your innate flow of happiness, I have two suggestions. Two, listen very closely. Here's number one. The, understand that the past is gone and that there is nothing, there is nothing, absolutely zero that you can do about it, short of having access to a time machine. <laughs> it is so true. Um, what goes in tandem with this when it comes to death, dying, that sort of thing, everybody dies. Everybody dies, and, and nobody's privy to when they die. And I always tell people, love, cherish, love and cherish those people who are close to you, those, and, and be kind to people you don't even know. You don't even know, because you never know how what you say can impact their life in that moment. And I, I do this with intention. I actually look to make a positive impact on the lives of people I encounter Every single day. I'm not here to push any negativity off on somebody else. I'm not here to, to contaminate somebody else's well, their mind being a well of pristine water. I'm not here to throw oil in it. And I encourage you to, to, to be the person that avoids doing that as well. Be the person who spreads joy and actually helps enhance of the creation of somebody else's happiness, brings it out of them. And recognize when people in the service industry, and these are people you come across every day, all day, put yourself in their shoes, contrast your life with theirs, and understand that people in the service industry are being dumped on, their wells are being contaminated all day long by people who don't care about them, who have no compassion, no empathy, and who are not kind. And love with condition instead of without condition. And understand that really you never know how one kind word from you will impact that person's life going forward. And I make it a point in my life to be that person that makes that impact. Matter of fact, I, I love it so much, I just, it, it's what I do and I have to remember it consciously all the time. When I walked into this woman's office in the billing department, I recognize that she spends time on the phone all day with people who are complaining about their bill. I wanted to be the person who brightened her day that day. And I did. Same thing with the doctor. I want to brighten their day. The person who's out front the, at reception, I want to be the person that is kind to them and is compassionate. And I can sense when there's something wrong, and I say, and I ask them, is everything Okay. Strive to be that person. Don't be so caught up in your own world of worry, frustration, fear, anxiety, regardless of what's happening in your life under the most extreme circumstances. I don't care if you just lost your job. The person that you, that you next encounter that is going to do something for you, don't put that off on them. When you give love, compassion, kindness to someone else. And, and, and if you, when you are empathetic and compassionate, when you give that to someone else, you feel better yourself automatically. Number two. Okay, so since, let me go back to number one, because you after all that diatribe, you probably don't remember. But number one is the past is gone. There's nothing you can do to change it. Number two, your future reality is influenced by the thoughts, consciousness, self-talk, and feelings you exhibit today. Today. With regard to the past, make this move as soon as possible. Train yourself to let go of the past. That's right, let go. Train yourself to let go of the past, ASAP. You millennials might call this a life hack. However, in reality, it's a simple element of inner alchemy that you can apply to keep happiness flowing. Because the less your mind is clogged with the past, the more you can be happy in the present. It's all about being in the present. Although sometimes we can all agree that the past is the past. When things happen, though, you can get so caught up in them that you lose sight of the fact that they are outside of your control 
and then you allow them to alter your feelings to the degree where the to which the negative vibrational energy generated by these events radiates from you into the future to the point where it influences your ability to be happy. That's what it does. That's what happens. You react so negatively that you carry that vibration with you that you're, to the point where you're unable to actually, you literally stop the flow of happiness. It's there, it's flowing, it's ongoing. You can work to grow it or you can literally stunt its growth and you stop it from flowing altogether. Think of putting a dam in a raging river. That's really what you're doing when you, when you react negatively to events and you carry that negativity along with you. Life events like relationship dissolution the death of someone close to you, sickness, accidents, trauma, property loss, or mental, mental trauma of some kind, or economic instability, food insecurity, uh, are just a few of the circumstances that can impact happiness. They all do. I'm, you're familiar with at least one of those. A profound quote, from, uh, quote that stresses the importance of letting go is, you could do wonders in your future if you could only forget your past. You could do wonders in your future if you could only forget your past. It's the simplicity and elegance of this quote is it continues to amaze me. You could do wonders in your future if you could only forget the past. Somehow innately, I don't know, I had this realization 30 years ago that that was the case because I realized that if I carried into the next into that into that night and the next day any negativity or anything I perceived as negative from the previous day, it would contaminate that day. It would contaminate my, my thought process, my attitude. And my attitude was my life's blood. Now, for the record, there are only two things that you can do with the past. Forget about it altogether or use it to evolve into a better human being. That is it. There is no other, There are no other choices. Forget about it altogether or... Use it to evolve into a better human being. If you punish yourself in the present with your past, unable to move forward because you're not living in the world, because you're living in the world of regret, which happens a lot for people, let me say this about that. Regret is not a place where you want to live for any amount of time. It really isn't. Everyone has missteps in their life, and hindsight is always 20-20 vision, which brings me to a beautiful song from George Benson, uh, who is one of the greatest crooners and guitar players and, and uh, songwriters of all time. He said, if you knew, in this song, he says, if you knew right then, if, excuse me, if I knew then what I know now, if I understood the what, why, when, and how, it would be clear to me what I should have done because hindsight is twenty twenty vision. And you can take that to the bank. Yeah, that's a beautiful song. This is a great thing about music. It lays out the truth in a way that makes it easier to comprehend and embrace. Music always does. You know, I heard another profound quote, quote recently, and I, I somehow all these quotes, it's not an accident. I don't believe in coincidences. These quotes come to me, and, and uh, they're beautiful. And I want to pass them on to you because they're relevant to what we're talking about here, what I'm, what I'm sharing with you. And uh, this, this quote is about freeing yourself, uh, the importance of freeing yourself from the past. And the quote says, Letting go of the past is the key to your evolution. The more you allow yourself to let go of who you were even two days ago, the more you allow yourself to be the expansiveness of who you are today. Brilliant piece of work. And I can't tell you who did it because I don't know. It's anonymous. I love this quote because it speaks of the whole uh, of being the whole being the, the whole and present person that you yearn to be in this very moment happy loving without condition non-judgmental uh, of yourself or others empathetic and compassionate I am certain that you strive for that if nothing else you strive to love without condition without judgment it's a challenging thing to do and you have to stay on top of it it is possible however and it's and it, and it an ongoing, it's going to be doing it for the rest of your life. It's the challenge, the greatest challenge in our life to remember that we're all one and that we should love everyone because of this, because we are all one without condition. How many times have you gone to sleep still reeling from adverse feelings about something that happened that day? 
Did you have a restful sleep? Likely not. When you have unfinished business rolling around in your head, your ego comes out to play, and it isn't pretty. It is not pretty. Your ego will concoct every adverse scenario possible to the point where you are unable to get a moment's rest. That's what the ego does. It comes out to play, baby. And when it does, it's all you can think of. Here's a great exercise to help you sleep soundly and embrace the next day with fresh eyes. Each night before you go to sleep, shed the day's negative thoughts and feelings, and and forgive yourself for any missteps. Express gratitude for the evolutionary opportunities that have been presented to you, and imagine yourself doing amazing things. Imagine yourself doing amazing things. Not only, I mean, basically, tomorrow. Imagine yourself doing something absolutely amazing tomorrow, meeting someone amazing amazing in your life, uh, connecting with someone, uh, experiencing success uh, in your business, on the job, whatever. When you awaken the next morning, vow to get the absolute most out of that day, to extract something good out of every experience and relational encounter, and approach the day with renewed energy and attitude. So you go to bed the night before, shed all the negativity, shed it. You can't change it, right? You can only learn from it. So vow to learn something from it in that moment, do it. And if you have to write down whatever that is that you've learned, write it down. That will help get it out of your mind. Each day is a gift. And, in, and what's beautiful is you have full and complete control over how you engage with it, feel about it, think about it, and respond to it. This is your gift as a human being, free will. In my view, it's life is too short, way too short to waste on negativity of any kind, thinking, feeling, self-talk, and actions. Negative thinking, negative feeling, negative self-talk, and negative actions and responses to events, especially when it's about the past. Only the present moment is relevant. Who you connect with, what you're feeling, thinking, saying about yourself, and what you're capable of, and how you respond to what you encounter. Because that's what shapes the next moment. That's what shapes the next moment. I know it might seem like a conundrum, but it's not. You, what you do, what you think about today, shapes the next moment. When you have a positive affirmation about yourself, when you say that positive affirmation about yourself, I am lucky, I am successful. You're actually, and you feel it with every fiber of your being, You're actually manifesting that in your future, that reality. You're creating it. Want to know something else that can help you let go? Letting go is not so much about forgetting about the past as it is focusing on the present. And this might also sound like a conundrum, but your mind can only focus on one thing at a time. It's been proven by science. So when you heighten your awareness of the present, and focus your attention, feelings, inner conversations, energy, and presence presence on the present moment, on this moment with intention, your past falls away. Mind can't focus on two things at once. Have you ever focused on something so intensely that time just magically slipped away? It's crazy, isn't it? If you grew up in an area of tech, you know what I'm talking about. You spend time on social media, and you look at your phone, and... and uh, the next time you look up, it's four hours later. That's what, that's what the feed does to you. You can get so engrossed in it. It's single-minded focus, single-minded purpose. It's four hours later, baby, as soon as you do it. it happens all the time, which is why I don't do it as often. <laughs> Let's shift gears for a moment and talk about shaping your future. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of affirmations. I came across one amazing affirmation from New Thought author Neville Goddard. I repeat it 10 to 20 times during my walks in the morning and encourage you to do the same at some point during the day. And you do it in a car when you're going to work, um, when you're out. Pay close attention to how you feel as you belt it out. And here's the affirmation. It's really awesome. He says, say this, I did it, I am doing it, and I will continue to do it until that which I have done is perfectly externalized within my world. 
I did it, I am doing it, and I will continue to do it until that which I have done is perfectly externalized within my world. This, br- this is brilliant and empowering self-talk in action. There's a YouTube video uh, with him in his own word, in his own voice, repeating this uh, for a full 10 minutes, and I will make sure I include the link in the description of this podcast, and it'll be on the YouTube page uh, of this podcast, the YouTube publishing of this podcast as well. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing. Just listen to it. And he, he, his, in his own words, it's just it's brilliantly said because he's a great orator. Now, what you imagine and feel deeply about having accomplished in this very moment is what you manifest in the next. So pay close attention to what you imagine in your waking hours. Is it a worst-case scenario or a magical one? Your imagination is a powerful tool and a precious gift, and it can be your partner in letting go of the past. Let me give you one more story about why it's important to let go of the past so you can prosper in the present and manifest an opulent future. Davis, my good friend of 30-plus years, died of prostate cancer a few years ago at the age of um, 60, actually uh, one month after his 60th birthday. He spent an an inordinate inordinate amount of time uh, during the latter years of his life, the last three, four, five years of his life, uh, lamenting about the past, about what he used to do and what we used to do together and how the 80s and the 90s were the best years of his life. Sure, he made some strategic financial and career mistakes that he never recovered from and spent way too much time living in the world of regret. And it's, it's a shame. It got to him, and it finally took him down. He was spending too much time thinking about the past and what he, what he could have or should have done And when he did this, it zapped his energy and focus and his hope and optimism for moving forward. And that's what living in the past does, especially when the past that you're living in is a negative one. When he would retell uh, retell stories about his past, about our episodes and escapades, escapades together, I would acknowledge that they were wonderful. And I'd say, my friend, I loved every moment. Unfortunately, however, the past is the past, and what you think about today is going to shape your future reality. Regret is a deep, dark hole with no light. You just have to take what you can from these past missteps and move on. Let them go, or you'll never evolve into the next phase of your life, which he never did. It's not a stretch to say that what killed my friend was not so much the prostate cancer as it was his inability to escape his past. Because thinking about his past shaped how he felt about and how he responded to the present. And that shaped his future, one that he didn't expect. I'm sure you'd love to go back and change something about your life knowing that what you know now. And there is no doubt that the person you see when you look in the mirror today has been shaped by past events and circumstances. There's no doubt about that. You have to, like I said, take what you can from the past, learn from it, and let it go. Every relational connection, no matter how brief or subtle, every experience, every word, every bit of knowledge you were exposed to, every feeling and every response to an event has contributed to who you've become. And please, know that you have a boatload of control over your future and you can create that future reality that you want to experience. In fact, you have all the control unless you give it away. And that giving away is a choice. Every single day I'm focused on the profound premise that it's not what happens, it's, it's how you process what happens that determines the reality you experience and the person you become. Are you letting your past control whether you're able to evolve and expand into the person you truly are or truly can be? Some people are. Mental, excuse me, multiple Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps, and this, this story really kind of struck me because it's, it's, he's not the only one, and I've seen it across all different kinds of industries and professions. But Michael Phelps and many other professionals uh, who've spent years of their lives solely focused on ascending to the pinnacle of their sport found themselves lost and without an identity when they were retired from competition. Think about that. You spend life from a kid on pursuing one thing 
something you're incredibly good at, it turns out, a gift. And when you're done doing it, when you've reached the pinnacle of your sport or pinnacle of whatever your, your career or whatever that path was, all of a sudden you realize, or maybe you don't realize, Michael had to go to therapy to realize this, that, that he was so caught up in that identity that he didn't know who he was. And that's what he said in an interview. I had no idea who I was. This has all happened, also happened to child TV stars whose careers dried up and when they uh, attempted to uh, transition into uh, acting as an adult. Even someone who's been identifying themselves as married for years can find themselves having an identity crisis after becoming divorced. Believe me, I know it can happen. Because your, your life and your identity was, hey, I'm married to so-and-so. I'm so-and-so's wife or husband. And it's that inner conversation that you have about yourself in relationship to that identity that really determines how you feel and your perception of being, of going through the divorce. Because really, it, the, the one thing you, you fail to see is your future. You're not imagining your future. You're actually looking at the past. Everything is retro. Bring it in that retro into the present moment. And it impacts the present moment. It contaminates this present moment. And it really prevents you from seeing the opportunities that are presented to you for your future. It also present, prevents you from shaping your future. From seeing something right now. It's a, it's a shift in consciousness completely. That's really what Michael Phelps had to go to therapy to get was that shift in consciousness and that that is not his identity that's not who he was it's what he did and now he can do something different he can transition that's not his only skill it's not his only gift and he can move on and i you know i i admire people and tell them so when they when i come across somebody who has reinvented themselves four even five times into their 50s or 60s They've literally stopped doing something, gone back to school, gotten re-educated, gotten into a new career path, and they did it for another 10, 15, 20 years. And then they stopped doing that and they decided to do something else. Definitely to be admired. Because we all have a multitude of gifts. We just have to give ourselves the opportunity to explore them and expand those gifts. Those gifts are here to contribute to manifesting the happiness and joy that we have in our lives because we're, we're good at those things and those things allow the joy and happiness within us to flow. I am very dexterous with my hands and fingers. I play the drums and I'm very good at it. I love it. I don't do it for a living. I do make money doing it on occasion, out playing live or in a studio uh, environment. However, it's not, it, it, I was not, it, I realized that playing the drums and singing or otherwise from a very young age, of the age of seven, that actually contributed to helping me feel comfortable in front of people. And now when I speak in front of whatever, 100 or 1,000 people, I can stand on stage, no problem at all. I realized that playing music contributed to helping me be comfortable in that environment. Because I was really born to speak, born to be in front of people, um, empowering, helping people empower themselves forward, which is what this podcast is all about. It's not me empowering you. It's me imparting information that can help you empower yourself. That's what it's all about. So um, who you are and your future reality is constantly being crafted by your most dominant thoughts. Please remember this. Your most dominant thoughts help create your tomorrow, they contribute. And the energy that, and, and the feeling you put into those dominant thoughts, that is what helps create the next moment. And it's up to you to take control of your thoughts and begin to direct them to reflect the future you truly desire instead of the one you want to avoid. And finally, when it comes to breakup of any kind, fears, worries, anxieties, frustrations, bitterness, resentment, Thoughts of revenge, anxiety, anger, hopelessness, lack, and despair are completely normal to feel. We are humans, after all. They're normal. What's not normal is to allow 
these negative feelings and emotions and inclinations to dictate your life going forward. That's what's not okay. So it's up to you to remain aware of how you feel. As I told uh, my friend who I was speaking about earlier, when I was going through the two divorces that I had, it was very helpful to get what was in my head out of my head and down on a pad of paper. I journaled. I journaled like crazy. Whenever I had a thought or idea, good or bad, whatever it was, if it was, if it was taking hold of the moment, I put it down on paper. And I've since, years later, gone back and read some of the stuff that, that uh, I wrote, some of the things I wrote. And I, I got to tell you, <laughs> I am not that person because I've evolved beyond it. Every day you're evolving. Every moment, the next moment, you're evolving past the last moment because you're experiencing something new. And it's up to you to transcend those negative feelings and emotions and inclinations. It's up to you to use the power that's within you to take control, that sovereignty, to take control of your life. You can do it. If you are having a rough time of it and would like some input, send an email to inquiry at michaeljrust.com. Be happy to respond. Be happy to address your situation anonymously in a, in, a, in a podcast going down the road. We are all one. We are all one. We're simply spirits running around in, in suits of clothes of different colors, and fashion, styles, whatever. That's what we are. Within, though, we are all one. And my feeling is that we spend our entire lives from birth attempting to obtain that oneness again, that, that love without condition. Personality and ego get in the way, of course, all along the way. However, know that I wish you well, and I know that what you feel is the worst today, the worst thing that could happen for you, will not be the worst thing that's happened to you tomorrow. And it's up to you to make sure that that's the case, because that's the power and control that you hold. If you want to tap into some resources that can help you expand your conscious awareness about your self-talk and your ability to control it, to take hold of it and, and, and work it and massage it to benefit you to great measure. I do have a book called Design Your Life. As a matter of fact, when it comes to relationships and breakups, <laughs> divorces and the like, I was told by a young lady who listened to it years ago when it, uh, when it came out that it is definitely the book that women and men who are experiencing uh, separation need to listen to because, as I've always said, um, and she concurred, your, the first thing to go is your inner conversation, how you feel about yourself and what you feel you're capable of. Yeah, that is the first thing to go. It's the first thing to degrade. And, and when you're experiencing any hardship in life, be it um, uh, the uh, loss of your job or uh, loss of anything, uh, or something that impacts you in a, in a, in, in a seemingly negative way. Uh, your inner conversation is one of the first things to become affected. That's the, that's the conversation you need to make sure is rock solid all the time, rock solid. You must constantly be aware of what it is that you're thinking and saying about yourself and what you're capable of. And when you are, uh, things don't impact you the way that they otherwise would. So pay attention to that. Check out Design Your Life, uh, using self-talk to create your life one day at a time. You can download it on Amazon. You can buy the audiobook, of course. Uh, it is not available in paperback. I recorded it years ago. And uh, as I've always said, self-talk is the bedrock of my life, and it should be of yours as well. In the meantime, um, if, you, if you have questions... Inquiry at michaeljruss.com. Inquiry at michaeljruss.com. Questions or comments can be forwarded there. I'll be happy to address them, shoot you back an email, respond to you. And uh, I know that you're going to make your life the, the magnificent, magnificent uh, experience that it was meant to be. And it's up to you to do so. Take care and make it a great day. Until next time. Bye-bye.